everybody, I'm meteorologist Matt Gray. Welcome to another YouTube edition of The Brainstorm. And if you like what you see from this video, we talk about weather and science and all your latest headlines around the Inland Northwest here on the Ford News Now YouTube channel. So go ahead, click down there, hit subscribe or wherever it is on whatever side of the screen. Uh, if you've got the winter blues like me, you will probably like this story that I've got for you today where we're talking about something very summery that should brighten things up a little bit around here. Lightning, because we have a new world lightning record and there is a good reason why. Let me uh, bring this up for you. New world's longest lightning flash on record on February 1st. This was released by the National Weather Service and I'll show you this. So this is from April of 2020. One of these big storm systems that happens so often in the spring as you head east of the Rocky Mountains, swept through in the early morning across the Gulf Coast, and one of these lightning flashes high up in the clouds. And the reason we can see these is because of our new weather satellites that have been launched in the last oh, six, eight years to where they're actually capturing the lightning flashes from space and giving us these awesome images here. And what they are showing us is, is really incredible. So we're talking about, in this storm, a lightning flash that was 477 miles long. It's probably longer than most of the road trips that you have taken in the last couple of years, especially with uh, COVID and everything else. But man, just crazy, crazy stuff. So how far away is that if you compare it to uh, here at home? So we, we drew out a circle here from Spokane and it got as close as we got with our measuring tool and our graphic system. And that goes all the way almost to the California border with Oregon and, in fact, into California in some places, into the northern California. That would get you to northern Nevada. That would get you to the northern tip of the Great Salt Lake. And it would get you almost as far north as Edmonton, Alberta. And would get you, and this shows you how big the state of Montana is, where I used to work, this will get you uh, about two-thirds of the way across Montana from Spokane. And if you headed due west, you'd be well out into the Pacific Ocean. So just crazy, crazy, crazy that we were able to pick that up on satellite, how great our technology's improved, number one, but also the fact of just how long that lightning flash was. So that was one of the two records uh, that were set by the World Meteorological Organization uh, over this winter, and that lightning flash all the way back in 2020. There's also another one where in South America, uh, the satellite picked up a lightning flash up in the clouds that lasted for 17 seconds. 17 seconds is a long time. Uh, we would time it out here, but uh, I think not talking for 17 seconds would, uh, would get pretty boring. So let's talk a little bit about why lightning happens and kind of use that to talk more about why we see these, quote, mega flashes, because that's what... Uh, the people who are doing this, who research these things, are calling them mega flashes. So, obviously, summertime, thunderstorms, it gets hot, all that hot air rises developing. You get these big, tall thunderstorms that reach tens of thousands uh, of feet up into the air. And what's happening inside them is you've got super cool water droplets, you've got water, you've got ice crystals. They're all rubbing together. And just like when you're rubbing your socks on the carpet, well, guess what? That creates static electricity. And what we see many times is we end up with a charge imbalance within the clouds and also a charge imbalance st with static electricity between the clouds and the ground. And basically you have so much energy that's being built up in these storms through this collision of snow and ice and water and all these other things, is, especially in violent thunderstorms. You know, you're talking about winds that are moving maybe 100 miles an hour in the vertical direction for the most severe ones. So there's a lot of movement going on. There's a lot of opportunities for static charge to build up. Eventually, you end up seeing a lot of polarized charge as the storm gets closer. So you have large positive charge at the top of the thunderhead. You've got negative charge at the bottom. And you usually end up with a positive charge down on the ground. And eventually, this releases. Just like when you touch the doorknob if you're rubbing your socks on the carpet, this is just a, you know, it's like that, except the release is hotter than the sun and potentially deadly. I know, but hey, that's our planet. It's amazing. It's crazy. 
you never know what's going to happen. And it's unbelievable every time that you think about some of these things. And so we end up with the lightning as a result. And a lot of lightning happens within the cloud itself because you have those vertical balances or even in some cases individual thunderstorm cells within a long line of thunderstorms like this basically system of thunderstorms, this thunderstorm complex as they called it, that had this 477 mile long lightning charge or lightning discharge. You get electrical imbalances that way as well, and that's one of the reasons why some of these bolts can go a long, long way. It just goes to show you, just because it might not be raining outside in the summertime, it doesn't mean that lightning is any less of a danger. There's also something called positive lightning, and this not only has there been research to back up that positive lightning is in fact uh, much hotter, about 10 times hotter and more energetic and more deadly as well because it's carrying more electrical current. A lot of times they strike very far away because it's the opposite charge. You're talking about a negative charge in the ground miles and miles away from where it's raining and that lightning coming off the top of the thunderstorms. And that takes a lot more charge to get done. In fact, positive lightning, their estimates, is only about 5% of lightning strikes. So look at that Florida man. It was a little something uh, about lightning. But yeah, this is just super cool stuff. And it's amazing that now with these satellites, we're able to be learning so much more about lightning. You know, another cool thing that we learned about lightning pretty recently, and I'll just go back to this frame here so we can talk, is a lot of time, uh, for many, many years, people thought that the African Congo uh, was the lightning capital of the world. The geography is just so where they have tropical thunderstorms almost every night. It took for these satellite measurements of lightning a few years ago for them to realize that the lightning capital of the world is actually around Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela. And it's a very similar idea. It's a low-lying area. It's actually a lake, and it's surrounded by mountains. And so the mountains produce thunderstorms that, that sink into the middle of that valley area at night and produce hundreds of thousands of flashes of lightning every single night. Or thousands of flashes, but over the year. So pretty cool stuff, right? Pretty cool stuff. I guess while we're talking about lightning, I'll show you this. I'll flip over to my map that I was using earlier. So there's a lightning report that gets released every year uh, by a company called Vaisala. Probably not pronouncing that right, but they use or they maintain the National Lightning Detection Network. So they're able to detect lightning that hits the ground. Guess where the lightning capital of Washington is? We're going to zoom in. We're going to zoom in. Oh, it's not showing up on my map here. But it's up this way. There we go. Little old Tiger, Washington, along the Ponderé River, is your lightning capital of Washington State with a mind-blowing 28 lightning strikes uh, within a short range of this area in 2021. So neat little fact that I kind of throw out there to, to end this segment. And thank you very much for watching. Hope we learned a little bit about lightning. I surely had a lot of fun. Uh, it just, you know, it blows your mind what we're discovering with how far lightning can travel, how long it can last sometimes. And hopefully this will get you in a summer state of mind to kind of break up some of the uh, some of the winter monotony we've been experiencing uh, in our weather around here lately. All right, I hope you have a great day, whatever day you are watching this. And hey, if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe to 4 News Now on YouTube. We'll see you again soon for another edition of The Brainstorm.